Let's return to the blog project that we talked about in previous lessons and look at the schema that we're going to use for that. So this is this is the blog running on my local computer and I'm looking for the page for a particular test post I just put in. I have a, a post with the uh, title this is a test post and this is the body of it and it's filed under these three tags and over here I can add a comment if I want. Now if I go here uh, into MongoDB what I've done is I've shown the the document that corresponds to that blog entry and uh, I want to take you through it real quickly and talk about whether or not it satisfies some of those uh, constraints, satisfies some of those goals rather of, of normalization in, in the relational world. So each of these documents uh, has an ID and an author. I wrote this blog post. There's a there's a body. This is a test body. Uh, there's a title. It's down here. This is a this is a test post. These are ordered in kind of a weird way because they were put in by a Python program and it doesn't keep the dictionaries ordered in any particular way. This is the date here that the blog post was posted, and this is the slug, the permalink that's going to be used to display the URL. Here are the tags, which has which are an array of different tags that this post was filed under. And then here are the comments that people left on the blog. It's an array of documents with a body, email, and author. Body, email, and author. So the question is, first of all, is this susceptible to the type of update anomalies due to the redundancy of data that we saw in that denormalized table from the relational world? And the answer is mostly no. All right, which is in, in the sense that my author uh, user ID with, appears only once, and and we and we use this as the as the ID for the users table. So the assumption in in our blog design is that the author name, the username, is is immutable. If we wanted to change that, we'd have to use a, a numerical user ID. Now this looks like it, it has some redundancy of data. Uh, and in a sense it does, except that these users that leave comments on our blog are unregistered, and so uh, they can leave whatever email address they want. So if the same user left the two comments, he could leave two different email addresses. So we're not necessarily looking to keep these consistent. So I would argue that this is not a redundancy of data in this case. And these tags, uh, you know, they, they sit here as strings, and, and they're also not listed redundantly either. So in, in this case, although we've, we've embedded a bunch of information that would be in multiple tables in, in a third normalized form in a relational world, we've embedded the, the data into a single document, we haven't really violated that goal of, uh, of keeping data consistent by avoiding redundancies. Now, one of the other goals when you're, when you're designing a schema, of course, is that it optimizes the, the data access patterns you're going to see in the application. And, and we do that very well in this case because when we pull the document out of this collection to display on the blog, we have just about all the information we need to display it to the user. Uh, we have the, we have the date it was posted. We have the we have their username. We have the comments. We have everything we need right in the same place. And that, by the way, right here at the bottom is this is what's in the users collection, which is just my user entry, which is an underscore ID of me, my my name Erlikson, and then a and then an encrypted password over here. And those are the two main collections that are used to organize the blog. And you're going to be doing some more work on the blog this week for your homework, and this is the way you're expected to insert the data. So it's a good, it's a good idea to take a, take a look at it here. So anyway, what we've done here is we've, in this design, is we've created a design where there is embedding of data within the document, and we're no longer using multiple tables. And you, you might argue that is denormalized, but it is denormalized in a way that does not violate many of the advantages of a, of a normalized design. We're not going to get these data anomalies in this design. All right, so let's, let's have a quiz. Okay, and, and here's the quiz. Which data access pattern is not well supported by the blog schema that we've chosen. And the choices are collecting the most recent blog entries for the, for the blog homepage, collecting all the information to display for a single post, collecting all comments by a single author, or providing a table of contents by tag. Which of those is not well supported by the current schema?